Hi, this is Jan Kabili with another episode of The Fix, the podcast that's all about Photoshop, Lightroom, and the ever-expanding universe of many things that you can do with your photos after you shoot them. Tonight, our subject is working with Adobe mobile apps, and my special guest to show us how to do that is Eric Reno. Now, you may know Eric Reno by another name, Photoshop Nut. And that's because Eric is the founder of a really popular website that brings you all kinds of Photoshop tips and tricks. And that is, what's it called, Eric? You can chime in. Tipsquirrel.com. Tipsquirrel.com, that's right. Um, so we're really lucky to have Eric here because he is a true Photoshop expert. Hi, Eric. Bless you. Thank you very much. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Did you say bless you? I, d I did, yeah. It's kind of like a hi, bless you, nice to see you. Kind of thing. Is that like an English thing? I, I guess so. It must be, mustn't it? Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to come up with a lot of isms, uh, uh, sort of English isms and Americanisms over the last, next half hour, I think, aren't we? And where, so where are you in England? Uh, I'm in a town called Peterborough, uh, with, uh, just north of Cambridge. So on that bit that sticks out on the right hand side, somewhere in there. Terrific. Well, I love it that we're able to do these things internationally. It's really great. And um, it lets everybody uh, get to know all the wonderful things you know about Adobe products. So I'm really looking forward to that. Would you mind giving folks a little hint of what you're going to be showing them later in the show? Yeah, sure. We're going to take uh, an image uh, that I've got on my hard drive on my desktop. And we're going to bring it into the iPad. And then we're going to do some little touching up there and then bring it back into Photoshop. Great. And so what app are you going to use on the iPad? We're going to look at Lightroom Mobile and also Photoshop Mix, which Photoshop is an underrated app as far as I'm concerned. I love it. Photoshop Mix. I'm really looking forward to that and Lightroom Mobile. So everybody stay tuned for that tutorial. Before we get there, though, I want to tell you all about a new feature here on The Fix, and that's something you're going to love. It's a giveaway. Every episode, we're giving away a book. And Rocky Nook's is the publishing house that's giving us these books, so we really appreciate it, Rocky Nook. This week, I have a terrific book for one lucky listener, and it's related to this podcast. It's about iPhoneography. And that book is such a great book that I actually had gone out and bought this for myself, so I can actually show it to you here. And it is this I, book. I've done a review of this book on Tipsquirrel. Oh, my gosh. That's great. Well, this yeah. book... That's great. So we should go to tipscroll.com and find out all about this book, The Art of iPhone Photography. What do you think about it, Eric? I, I love it. I think it's really innovative as well. And some of the things you can do on the iPhone is quite extraordinary. I love phonography. Yes, I do too. And this book in particular, it's really the only one I've found that has um, really the kind of work that I like, which is more of the art um, mm -hmm. type of images. And uh, it introduces different artists who have created these images. And then it tells a bit about what they did to get that image so that you can try those things yourself and try the different apps that they mentioned. So that is the art of iPhoneography. It'll be available to one lucky listener or viewer. So here's how you put your hat in the ring to get that book. You go to thisweekinphoto.com slash the fix. And you look for this episode of the fix, the one with Eric Reno. And you go all the way down to the bottom to the comments on that episode and just click in the comment and upload an image. And if you would please tell us which app or apps you've used to process that image. Because what I'd like you to do this time is share an image that you have processed on your mobile device, whether that's an iPad or an iPhone, an Android phone, or an Android tablet. So that's what you do. You upload your processed mobile device image and tell us which app you used. And if you want to add a little bit about what you did, I'm sure everyone would love to hear that too. And then we'll choose someone who will win this terrific book. So that's what we're going to be doing with the giveaway. You'll have two weeks um, to post your photos in the show notes at thisweekinphoto.com slash the fix, the Eric Reno episode. Now let's get down to some um, of the good stuff. Eric, tell me a bit about uh, the mobile apps that you use the most. Okay, well, it depends which device I'm working with, if I'm honest. So I, I am an iPhone user, but I also use Android devices. Um, I'm, I do some stuff with uh, one of the, the telephone companies here in the UK, three. And so they, they help me to experiment a bit, so that's quite cool. Um, so on the, on the iPhone, I'll try every single app that I can get my hands on. There is nothing quite like 
the apps that are available for the iPhone. You can't really get them for the Android right now. One of the ones that there's a great crossover is Snapseed. I do like that. That's nice, quick and easy. Get in, get done, get out again. But of course, Photoshop Touch on iOS devices is extraordinarily powerful and really good. And I want to I want to just say that um, when I've talked about this before with groups, a lot of people say that they've tried it and it wasn't very good. And I think what's happening there is people are trying Photoshop Express um, and not realizing there's now Photoshop Touch, which is completely different and far and away feels different. So the, I like Photoshop Touch very much. Now, you know, tell me if I'm wrong, but I understand that Photoshop Touch is going away now that Adobe has its uh, task-specific apps, Photoshop Mix and Brush and Shape and Color. But you say that? Yeah. I've heard this rumor. Oh, uh, okay. I didn't know this, but uh, that would be a shame if it does because it's very, very powerful. But I, can, I understand why, you know, for specific jobs, you can jump into different apps. You know, there's Brush and, and Line and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I can understand, but it would be a shame if it went. And Photoshop, Photoshop Mix is very powerful, as we'll see, um, allowing you not just to do, uh, you know, compositing and selecting, but also to do some really powerful, you know, single image adjustments now. So yeah, I think I, that Mix is where it's going for that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I like to say, I think it's totally underrated, and that's because a lot of the great features are, are not first apparent when you open it up. Um, and I've heard a lot of people say, well, isn't it just, you know, a load of filters? Not quite, but we'll, we'll have a look at that uh, a little bit later. Okay, so you've been using Snapseed, you mentioned. Um, yep. What about the Adobe apps? Can you sort of explain which ones you use and what the different ones do? Certainly. I've got my iPad right next to me, so my eyes are going to wander over there while I remind myself which ones I, which ones I use. So uh, Adobe Shape I use quite a lot. That's good for inspirational stuff and goes straight into your libraries as well. So, uh, you know, one of the examples that I use is if you're a photographer, a wedding photographer perhaps, and uh, you get to the reception and there's a motif on the placemats or anything like that. If you use a Adobe Shape, you can snap that straight away, put it in your libraries. When you come to do the photographs later for their album, you can put this motif on the corner or in the, you know, on the front of the album, something like that. It really makes it personal to them, which I think is a great use of uh, Adobe Shape. So as it sounds like what you're saying is that you can start with a photograph that you shoot with your iPhone or iPad and then use Adobe Shape to convert it into a shape. Is that a vector shape? Yes, it is. Uh, and it's, it draws it really nicely. Um, you know, the, the way that uh, I'm not very good with Adobe Illustrator, but Adobe Illustrator will draw those nice vector lines for you that almost taper out at the end. It's very similar to that. Um, and you don't actually have to have a photograph. You can just go and snap it. Um, with Adobe Shape, and it will draw the lines for you. It's a, a phenomenal app. That's a and, bit uncritical about that, so can I have a look? <laughs> and then what? So then you've got this thing. So then you can bring it into what programs? That into, shape into that you made. Photoshop, into Illustrator, and InDesign, I believe. Uh, definitely Photoshop, definitely Illustrator. And you can just drag and drop these as a almost like a smart object from your libraries straight in. And you, of course you can collaborate with libraries as well. So if you're a bride has certain colors that she's using in her bouquet, then she can drop those, or you know, the, group, the groom can also drop colors into the library. And you have that prior to the wedding as part of your planning for the wedding or whatever uh, function you're, you happen to be shooting. So I think libraries are set to grow a great way of using cloud computing, which I'm a, I'm a huge fan of. So that's Adobe Shape. So, you know, I can think of, even though I don't shoot weddings, I can think of a lot of situations where I would love to have that. For example, if there is a logo that you want to put on a photo or a watermark or something, anything that is that you have on paper, you can shoot it with your phone, have Adobe Shape do that terrible work that I don't like doing of tracing an image, you know, that we used to have to do in Illustrator. And so you skip that step and you've got this vector-based shape that you can then bring into all of your designs that you're making in Photoshop and in Design Illustrator and other apps on the phone as well. So that's terrific. I've seen people use it for their for their signature to put onto the bottom of uh, different pieces of artwork as well. So that's another use. Great. Uh, Adobe Color, that's another of my favorites. Um, now Adobe Shape, Adobe Color, Adobe Brush and one other. Adobe Line are now available on Android. That was in the latest update when we had CC 2015. Uh, release. So they're available on the Android, which is great news, which adjoins uh, Lightroom Mobile. 
All right. I'm sorry to repeat what you're saying, but your voice is, your sound is a little mushy. So I want to make sure people understand okay, that sorry. recently, <laughs> that recently there was the big photo, the big uh, Creative Cloud 2015 update in in mid June of 2015, um, just prior to when we're recording this episode. And at that time, Adobe brought to Android this suite of uh, mobile apps that you're mentioning. Um, what what were they again? I can't recall the names. Brush, brush, color, yeah. a shape, and line. Yes, absolutely. My apologies. Is that, is that better? I brought the microphone a little bit closer. Is that better? Yes, much better. It's, it's, it's because I've got such a strong accent, I guess. <laughs> I talk properly, you see. <laughs> you do, you do. It's very nice. I'm, I love I'm, English accents. I'm a sucker for English accents, I should tell oh, you. Okay, and I'll give you my best to talk more, young lady. <laughs> we also have on the iOS, don't put me off now. Uh, we also have on iOS devices new ones like uh, Adobe Voice and Adobe Slate, which are great for making presentations and stuff like that. So um, they're not to be forgotten, of course. Um, and if you're into your moving image, then Adobe Clip, um, which is pretty good, which works well with Premium. So a whole suite, Adobe Comp as well, um, Adobe Preview, which is new. Um, that's for previewing uh, your, your, if you've got a, image up on Photoshop, you can preview it directly on uh, your device. As long as they're on the same Wi-Fi network. I've so seen that good. I've seen that one uh, demoed um, with emphasis on for designers so that yeah. when they're doing when they're using the new artboard feature in Photoshop to uh, design some comps, different comps of uh, an ad say or a website, um, then you can see what you're doing right on your phone. So if you're designing a website that's going to be, you know, that obviously is going to be on the phone, you can see how it's going to look on the phone. Yeah. It's amazing. It's on, it's on the fly as well. So you make an adjustment in Photoshop and you see it in real time. It's and fantastic. That one, that's fantastic. And that one's called what again? That one's Adobe Preview. It's a little yellow one with two yellow boxes. Excellent, excellent little app. I mean, I'm not a designer, but I still like to play with these things, as I'm sure you can appreciate. So which other ones do you want to tell us about? You mentioned a whole bunch. Are those the two that you use the most? Shape and preview? Shape I really like and color. Um, so previously known as cooler, um, but now color, just for grabbing colors as you're, as you're working. So uh, you might see a nice color out while you're out on a walk and you know, snap it and you can find it, uh, the exact hex code or, or RGB, whatever it is you like, and get complementary colors. That's, that's quite helpful. I mean, we're talking a lot of design stuff here, I know, rather than photography. But, you know, it's, it's part of uh, people's workflow, especially if they're putting books together and stuff like that. So um, it's another good one to use. What about this? What's Adobe Comp? I'm not familiar with that one. Adobe Comp um, is, uh, so you can, I've actually just opened it on my iPad just to remind myself. So uh, you can um, make up uh, web pages, flyers, that kind of stuff. So you can put in, I'm waving my hands around, my apologies. Uh, you can put in uh, images and text uh, and icons and that kind of thing. And so um, so then we can uh, have a look at what the web page is going to look like before we take it over into InDesign. Great. So it sounds like Adobe is really covering a wide range of, um, of tasks, each almost with a separate app. So these are kind of task specific or um, I don't know, is it profession specific? I don't know how to call it rather than yeah. one big app like Photoshop that does everything. And I think it's taking you away from the desktop. So rather than sit all the time in front of your computer, you can do this either on the train or on the plane, or as I do on my reclining chair in my living room. So with Lightroom Mobile, you can sit and you can do major edits there. And uh, then when you go and sit at your desk, all the real donkey work has been done. Fantastic, it's, fantastic. It's, it's great if you're using it on set as well. So if you've got that ability to link there, you can uh, shoot uh, tethered perhaps, uh, link that through to Lightroom Mobile, and then actually see your images on the mobile device and make some uh, adjustments there and there. So it sounds like uh, of all these apps, correct me if I'm wrong, but that the ones that are most useful for photographers are Lightroom Mobile, of course, and yeah. Photoshop Mix, which allows you to do selective editing, compositing, and also um, just some regular adjustments. Does that yeah. sound right? Yep, yeah, absolutely. And let's uh, throw in Photoshop Touch just for the heck of it. Sure. 
<laughs> you don't want to let a Photoshop touch go, do you? <laughs> I'm not going to let it go. No, not without a fight. Well, you can keep old uh, apps on your phone, I think. There's no reason yeah. not to. Yeah. It'd be a shame if they don't update them. But yeah, I totally understand. It just anyway, may not be. It just may not be updated. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So now that we've discussed this and we have a little bit of background, I would love if you would share your screen and show us a tutorial that makes use of Lightroom Mobile, Photoshop Mix, and Photoshop on the desktop. Sure. Okay. So here's my iPad, and uh, this is actually tethered onto my computer. So obviously, it doesn't have to be tethered, but for the sake of this, um, I have it tethered. Now, I've got Photoshop Mix here, but I'm going to go into Lightroom Mobile first, which is the one in the top right-hand corner. And you can see that I've got a collection here that I've shared from the desktop app. Now, more of that, uh, I'm sure, will be better explained by other people on this podcast. So I won't go into that too much. But you can see here on the second row that I've got an image of an archway, and that's the one that I'm going to tap on now. And you'll see a, a little red dot appear there. Now, that can be turned off. I've just put that on for the sake of this little run-through. What's the little red dot for people who can't see and are just listening? What's it doing? Oh, my goodness. So that's just showing where I'm tapping uh, on, on my screen. So um, you can turn that off if you're not demonstrating as I am right now. Um, so once we're in Lightroom Mobile and we've got our image up, at the bottom of the screen there, there's four icons. We can see the film strip, the crop, the presets, and the adjust. Now, I don't want to spend too long in here, but I'm just going to tap on adjust. And if you've been using Lightroom Mobile previously, this is all looks very familiar, except on the extreme left-hand side, we've got this uh, little uh, aperture there. If I tap on that, we've got four new bits, or three new bits, um, tone curve, vignetting, and color black and white. Ooh, exciting. And this is all brand new stuff that was just added in mid-June of 2015. Yeah, just a few days ago before we recorded this. So um, it is really, really powerful. If I go into the color black and white, you, on the right-hand side there, you see that we've got the colors like we would do in a bridge or in Lightroom full, uh, where we can attack uh, specific colors so I can bring up and down the oranges there for example uh, which is hugely powerful and if we're in black and white mode um, then uh, obviously we'd be changing the, uh, the the luminous values of the grayscales there so really really cool um, the vignette obviously speak for yourself and the tone curve um, is a bit like a curves in uh, Lightroom and in Photoshop so three new toys for us to play with Oh, I have a question about tone curve. I haven't used it yet. Um, do you do you drag on the curve itself, or is there a tool like a targeted adjustment tool where you could drag on the image and have the curve move? I don't think you can uh, go on the image, but I can tap on the lights there, and then uh, I can get a little bar that goes backwards and forwards. So if I click on that, and I can drag it over, and it will affect the curve straight away and updates the histogram as well. So uh, I don't think you can drag. No, you can't drag on the image. That's that's. We're asking too much, really, aren't we? There? But you can uh, drag on the curve itself if you if you click it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, drag, drag, drag bits and bobs down there as well, and it will affect the the digits down the bottom. Yep. Can you believe you can do this on a mobile app now? This is huge. It is. It's, it, and like I say, it just takes you away from the desktop, doesn't it? Frees you up completely. Really, really good. Uh, so I'm just going to go back to, to basic there, and then I'm going to scooch along and click on reset. I'm going to reset all just so we're we're back to to where we were when we brought this image in. Now, the reason why I bought that into Lightroom Mobile was so that I could make these first adjustments should I wish, but now I can take it out into other apps. So at the top right-hand corner of the screen, I've got uh, this square with an arrow coming out the top of it. If I tap on that, I get my uh, export or my share menu, and I can open in. So I'm going to open in. And then I get this little list come up, which uh, iOS device users will uh, recognize. And one of them here is uh, open in Photoshop Mix. So if I tap on that, then my iPad automatically opens Photoshop Mix for me and gets my image front and center. So uh, in, the, in Photoshop Mix, there's no red dots, I'm afraid. So I'll try and explain where I'm going to be tapping and moving around. Okay, now I have another question. I'm sorry to keep interrupting you, but they're That's trying fine. to save them in order. What if I didn't go to Lightroom Mobile first, but I had used Lightroom Mobile as the method to bring a photo from Lightroom Desktop onto my iPad? Now, two days go by, and I open Photoshop Mix, and I realize, hey, I want to use that photo that's in Lightroom Mobile. Okay. Can, I, can I access it directly from Photoshop Mix? 
right now, no, you can get it from your libraries and uh, you can get it from your cloud. So saving it into your cloud storage is the way to go, really, if you're going to be doing that, if you're not going to use Lightroom Mobile, in my opinion. Uh, is that so how do you get it to your cloud storage? Do you have to do that on the desktop? Uh, no, I believe you can do that from Lightroom Mobile. You're putting me to the test now, aren't you? Uh, but you can <laughs> save it back, I think. Um, but it would, it's... Hmm. Well, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But the point is, there's a little bit of a, um, a little mm, bump in the road here. If you start with Photoshop Mix and you're yep. trying to get your Lightroom Mobile photo, better to start with Lightroom Mobile and use the open in Photoshop Mix command that you just showed Absolutely. us. Okay. Until, until the update, we had um, a little button here that said from Lightroom Mobile, but uh, it's been taken away for reasons unbeknown to me. From Photoshop Mix. Yeah, so uh, we, we have to sort of have a little bit of a work around there, which is a shame, and, uh, you know, hopefully it'll come back soon. Well, that's okay, as long as folks know how to do it. Yep, yep, yep. Um, okay, well, I'm, I, I've just come back into the main menu here, and where it says New Composite, if I just tap on that, I can uh, call this one something else. I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to call this Jan, because I can, uh, just so we can uh, distinguish it from others. And when I did that, you may have noticed that a little Creative Cloud icon came up, and that means it's saving that update to the Creative Cloud. So even something just like changing the name will automatically sync for us. There is no saving here. We just uh, we just carry on and work. So um, back in Photoshop Mix, you can see that I've got how many? One, two, three, four, five icons at the bottom of the screen. I've got my image in the middle. And then up at the top, I've got two boxes. One of them holds a icon of the image itself. And then I've got another one with a cross and checkerboard behind it. We're going to come to that in just a second. I'm going to scooch back down into the icons at the bottom. And the first one I'm going to go to is the adjust. Um, now we can do an auto fix, exposure, contrast, clarity, and saturation here, all in the ways that you would expect them to work. So uh, if I came into exposure, I could just then drag left and right, and uh, it would alter the exposure. I don't really want to do that right now, though that's not really what this is about. Auto fix works reasonably well. Um, with this image, it brightens it up quite well, but we're going to learn this in a, in a slightly different way in just a second. So I just wanted to show you that they were there. I'm going to tap on the cross there to come back out of it. So the thing is, though, if you started in Lightroom Mobile, there you have more sophisticated adjust controls. Absolutely. So you may as well do your adjustments in Lightroom Mobile, and then you don't have to use the adjust controls here once you've done Absolutely. that. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Do it in Lightroom Mobile if you're going to use that kind of workflow without a shadow of a doubt. Um, OK, next one along is the one that puts most people off, which is the looks. And when they open this up, they think that it's uh, just a uh, filters, but it, it's a bit more than that. If I come over to, uh, let's brighten it up a bit. So I, I tap on brighten and it brightened the image up, but it brightened all of it. It was a global uh, adjustment and I don't really want that. Because of the white walls, all I want really are the shutters around the door to be brightened. So what I can do here is I can double tap and then start uh, dragging my finger around. And you can see that one thing Photoshop has always been good at is finding edges. And sure enough, it's just finding the edges of the shutters for me and filling those in. So I've gone from a global adjustment just to where I want it by double tapping and dragging my finger around. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. That's It's like you're uh, painting with a mask on the image here Absolutely. in uh, Photoshop Mix. And again, I want to say that you were using something called looks, L-O-O-K-S. They're kind of like... They kind of seem like a row of, of different styles you can choose from. Yeah, like that filters that you see, yeah, and, and other apps. But in this one, you can you can put it right where you want it. You can see down in the bottom right corner, I've just tapped on it there. It's got this smart brush, which will then go out and find all the the, the uh, angles. That's not the right word. The edges. There we go. Um, it's late on a Friday. You have to let me off. Uh, <laughs> have to uh, and it goes out and finds the edges for us so um a really powerful way to use photoshop mix but there's still even more to come even better than that i would say i'm going to click on oh i was going to meant to click on the the tick there not the cross let me just bung that back in again just to show how quickly you can do this there we go look at that as quickly as that so yeah. then, and you're using the smart brush, but I saw there's also a regular brush next to it, which I assume yeah. does not look for edges, and that, that would let you paint anywhere, correct? Yeah, you can just brush it in wherever you want it to go. 
but I'm I'm way too lazy and I let Photoshop make to do everything I can. So there we go. I'm going to tap the tick this time when we've got a better image coming up. Okay, I'm going to skip over cutout and crop just for the moment because I want to go into more edits, and this is where the real power is. Hidden under here are three uh, filters: upright, shake reduction, and content aware fill. Woo! Yeah, now these, when I saw Shake Reduction first demoed, I watched a uh, webinar from Adobe Max. It's got to be about four or five years ago. And I saw, saw Shake Reduction and I thought, well, that's never going to appear on my computer, not for a long time yet. No desktop is powerful enough. And now we've got it on desktop, but now we've also got it on my iPad as such. Uh, we'll, we'll discover how they managed to do that in just a minute. But these are incredibly powerful filters. Um, and here they are, right in front of me. So I'm actually going to use the upright to, to bring up my uh, my door a little bit squarer. So as soon as I tap on that, you notice it's got the Creative Cloud icon on the representation there. When I click on that, it says it's uploading the asset. And that's exactly what's happening. It's going off up into the cloud. It's being rendered there. And before I can even explain what's happening, it's sent the information back and it's uprighted my image three different ways. So I've got one, I've got two, and I've got three. Now, three and one are very similar, and I, I'm going to guess that probably viewers can't see the difference there. I can see it just on my iPad. So if I go back to one, you can see how it's squared it up really nicely. Oh, I see. So it's giving you options, and you get to choose which of the upright corrections you like best from the options it offers. Absolutely. So um, I get the choice which one, but then I don't have to have that exactly either. Where it says 100% down there by the representations, if I just click on that and hold, you can see I get another scrolly wheel type thing, and I can then start adjusting it to exactly how I want. If Photoshop Mix hasn't got it bang on, I can uh, go in there and adjust it manually. So incredibly powerful, incredibly powerful. So I'm going to uh, accept that. I'm going to tap the tick. Now, like I say, there were a couple of other shape reduction and content aware fill. They both work just as well as the upright. Content aware fill is just remarkable. Um, I've used it so many times on different things. Really, really good. Can you use it to fill in the edges of this um, of this uprighted image? which are now uh, blank, you know, they're, they're see-through. Or mm -hmm. I've never tried. Let's Good do time. it. Let's just see. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm well, co-opting your good. tutorial. Okay. Um, I've used it for things like when uh, a baby has been uh, laying on a blanket and the blanket's got um, crinkles in it or something like that. So there we go. I've just, uh, there we are. I, don't, I have no idea. I'm just going to take a little bit of that away. Um, I'm just painting with my finger, I'm just painting, and it's got a, a kind of a ruby lift to it where I'm going to do the fill. I'm going to tap fill, and it's going to go off, and we're going to see what happens. Now, my original plan was just to enlarge this, so we cropped off the backs here, or the sides, and uh, let's see what's going on. Nothing. It, did, it didn't like it, did it, Jan? Now, that's very interesting. So just to take it to a little side, um, I have noticed that the same thing happens like if you're in Lightroom on your desktop and say you make a panorama and you end up with those edges around it, you yeah. cannot fill those in, um, at least if you're in a raw file, like the, the spot removal tool, which is sort of the closest thing to the content aware tool here, won't just won't write on the white edges. Maybe that's what's happening here, that the content aware can't right on these edges because they're, they're empty of content. What do you no, think? Could well be. There's no pixels there, so we're not going to do anything. I've not tried it on empty pixels, I've got to admit. So uh, that was a good experiment. Yeah, it was. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. Just as another aside uh, to that, uh, of course, with the update with uh, Photoshop, when you make a panorama, it automatically asks you now if you want to content to wear fill uh, around the edges, which takes out a couple of steps for us. I've so seen that. I've seen that. But but then it's the image stays in Photoshop, which is kind of not what I usually want. Uh -huh. you know, I want it back in Lightroom um, as a raw file, or I want it in Camera Raw as a raw file. The one that Photoshop makes of panoramas, I don't think it's a raw file automatically. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and just to, just to add another little bit, uh, Photoshop Elements users have been doing that for. For a very long time, so I'm surprised it's taken this long to get into Photoshop. Come on, but that's anyway, that's often that's often the case. You get these new features in Elements first. Yeah, 
and it's a, it's a great feature you know just for your workflow get it done and dusted but you're right you've got to take it out of lightroom and into photoshop i'm not a prolific lightroom user myself i'm still firmly in bridge but i don't take a lot of photographs so um, i don't need a database I'll, I'll take 300 photographs but i'll probably keep one uh, <laughs> No, I'm not. I, I never claim to be a good photographer. Well, you know uh, what, though, Eric? You should keep all your bad photos, too, because they're great for demos. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just like this. Yeah. When I, when <laughs> not I like that. This is a great photo. I like this one. <laughs> I don't think so. But anyway, um, okay, so I, I'm, I'm going to uh, click the tick there just to make sure that I come back into my main menu. Uh, I'm going to use a, a two-finger pinch, which uh, I think we're all familiar with reasonably much now. Um, and just to, I can just square that up. And I can get rid of the dead pixels there just by, uh, by double pinching and enlarging it a bit. Okay, let's uh, add to this now. I'm going to tap on this square at the top there. It's got a checkerboard, so it's empty pixels with the plus sign in it. So if I click on that and then ask where I want to go to get my image. Uh, I'm actually going to go to the Creative Cloud. So I'm going to tap on the icon for the Creative Cloud and then into my folder called Stock. And I've got some stock images in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take up the uh, image of Little Tree, which is a smaller version of the one next to it, which is from uh, my friends at Photolia, who I do some writing for. So if you want to know some more Photoshop bits, go over there and check out their blog. I'm going to go and tap on that. Am I doing enough self-promo here, Chan? Am I doing Not enough. Well? You need to do a lot more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I clicked on that and it's brought it up uh, big for me. So as I can go, yeah, open the file and it's going to open that for me in Photoshop Mix. Uh, just uh, while we're talking about Photolia, they have an app called uh, Instant, Photolia's Instant. Have you come across this, Jan? No. Uh, and it's, it's part of their stock image site that is just for images taken on mobile devices. So, you know, we're all snapping away with our mobile phones. We could be making money from it. So it's a free download, and you can sign up for photo and you can start making money from your, your mobile images. Really? Have you, try have you sold any up there? I've uploaded a couple. Like I say, I don't call myself a photographer, Jan. Thanks for, thanks for bringing that up again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's well it's well worth it's well worth a go you know it, if you've got your mobile phone images sat on your hard drive doing nothing they may as well be sat there making you a few pennies so uh you know like I said, and um, the great thing about the app as well is if you take photographs of people and i would recommend you do because people are the things that are most scarce in the instant part of photolia um inside the app there's actually a model release form as well so you can do the whole thing all in the app, which is really, really helpful. Fantastic. I'm downloading it right now. Okay, cool. <laughs> Fotolia uh, yeah. Instant, right? Fotolia yeah. Instant, is that what it is? All right. And, uh, yeah, and of course, Fotolia has been acquired by Adobe. So there's also Adobe Stock now, which has been integrated into Photoshop. And that is a whole other podcast right there, isn't it? So yes. uh, anyway, so I've got, my, I've got my palm tree here. But of course, I want to see how it looks. Uh, with my image. So what I want to do is I want to cut this out and I've, I've purposely chosen something quite difficult here obviously um, with all these green leaves. But if I click on cut out we then get a very by now a familiar kind of menu at the bottom. So I know straight away that a double tap and drawing with my finger was going to highlight something. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over to the greenest part of this which is on the right hand side is where the, the green is most at its thick. So then I'm going to give Photoshop Mix the the biggest opportunity to, to understand what it is I want it to go and select. And then I just run and run my finger around the different leaves until I get a good selection of what I want. And then I can let go. Now I missed a little bit over there, so let's just go back and go and grab that. And there we go. Now I've got a little bit too much white here. So down the bottom on the left hand side where it says add, I can click on that. And that's going to take away a double tap and then just start rubbing it away. I'm not being too careful. There we go. I've got my palm tree reasonably how I want it for this composition. So I'm going to tap the tick here. Now there's a lot of white in there, but we're going to deal with that in just a moment. Now using the two finger pinch, I can now enlarge, I can make it smaller, and I can position this. I can see if this particular composition is going to work. And I go, yeah, okay, that's, that's not too bad. It needs some work. Um, but that'll do me fine. So now I've got my doors how I want them. I've got my leaves reasonably where I want them. 
I've made my composition. I'm happy with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on the square at the top right hand corner with an arrow pointing out of it. And that again is our share button. And you can see that we've got several here going from straight to Instagram or Facebook, all the way up there where we can send it to Lightroom or we can send it to Photoshop. And Photoshop is where I want to send this one. Now, this uh, save to Lightroom button, I understand, is new, correct? It is, um, and please don't ask me any more about it. Like I say, I'm not a frequent Lightroom user. And it's only a couple of days since it's been in, and I haven't had a chance to really get to grips with it. But this is terrific for me, who is a Lightroom user, because it seems like after you have made a composite here in Photoshop Mix on your phone or your iPad, you can automatically get it into Lightroom on your desktop, all imported and, you know, have another version, a really interesting version of multiple images. So I'm going to, sorry, I'm just going to interrupt you just for a second. So while you were talking there, we've uploaded the image. It's already done. And there at the top of my screen, it says that Jan has been added to my uh, Creative Cloud. And now it's open in Photoshop. So as easy as that, I've got it now on my desktop. So yeah, what? going back to Sorry, sorry, Jan. Wait, no, wait, no, wait. So it, now you're back on your desktop, and Photoshop was automatically launched for you, or you already had it open? I had it open, but it would have launched it for me if it wasn't open. And opened the composite that you just made on your iPad in Photoshop yeah. Mix would be open here in Photoshop in your desktop. Yeah, and it's also saved to my file. Uh, if I go over to my finder here, you can see that there's my Photoshop folder, and there it is, Jan. So it's, it's safe to for me, it's synchronized everything. Let's go back to Photoshop. What's really great about this is that if I come over to my layers panel, you can see over there that the two layers are still separate, but also those leaves have a mask. They're not just lost their pixels, they are now masked out. And oh my gosh, Where, now this is a layer mask on the layer, so there are more than one layer, and yeah. there's a layer mask, and all that came from Photoshop Mix into yeah. Photoshop. Yeah, while you were, while you were chinny-wagging about Lightroom, uh, Creative Cloud was doing all that for us. What's a chinny-wag? A chinny-wag, a little talk, having a little chinny-wag. <laughs> <waggling. laughs> really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So what we can do here is I can double click, you're making me giggle now, I can double click on the mask um, and then we've got the mask edge button here in the properties panel. So I'm going to click on that and that really is just refine edge or refine mask. So I'm getting my brush here. Now I don't know about you, John, but I found that this works better if I follow the lines of what I want to mask out. So with these leaves, I'm going to go sort of in and out of the leaves here. Have you found this or am I just, have I just dreamt that this worked better? I don't know why it would make any difference. But to me... No, I know why, I know why, but that's another tutorial. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll say a bit okay. So there we go. So um, there we are. So now I've got my leaves all done. I can go and uh, then color correct that, make it a little bit better. Uh, maybe a, a hue saturation in there or something like that for this image. And just to sort of make it a bit more believable that it's part of this this scene this oh it clip. really does it looks so realistic so the upshot of all this is when you get back the reason to come back to photoshop is just to use the really sophisticated additional tools in photoshop to fine-tune things but photoshop oh. mix does a lot of the work for you mm -hmm. yeah photoshop mix does the donkey work and then you can just come along and refine it in photoshop again like i say that just spend less time at the desk i think is the the lesson we're learning here wow i love this it's fantastic. The fact that it brings a mask in and it was done so quickly just astounds me. And I mean, I, I'm, I'm no spring chicken. I'm, you know, I'm getting on in my ears and technology is starting to surprise me almost daily. So uh, to the youngsters, this may be not be surprising, but, you know, with all due respect, Jan, you'll remember the days where we used to have to get a one pixel brush and go and mask out hair and all that kind of stuff. So I don't remember that. What do you mean? <laughs> 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 um, um, and, and so all this kind of refine edge and, and doing it on an iPad is, is absolutely remarkable. I love it. I'm very okay, I do have a question for you. I noticed when you were back on the iPad in Photoshop Mix that there is a refine edge button there as well. Yep. Um, it's not quite so good there. It's, it, it, what we're doing actually is we are refining the edge on that cutout 
we are refining it, but it's it's not great with something like this. If it was a car or something with nice solid edges, we'd have no problem at all. But I was really putting it to the test with these. And is that button that refine edge just like an off and on? There's, yeah, absolutely. I see. Okay. And it was it's on by default, so I was using it as we were as we were working. We do have the feather edges, which may have helped us a little bit, but as you can see, it kind of just blurs the background out a little bit. So, um, yeah, it, it could help in some instances, but not really with the image that I was using. Well, Eric, I see why you're so excited about Photoshop Mix and the way it integrates with Photoshop on the desktop. Um, fantastic. And especially for those of us who are always shooting with our phones, and that's the majority of people now. Um, yeah, it. It's really, really exciting. Yep. I, I, I'm really excited about the, the transition that I'm making from, from carrying a DSLR around to mobile photography. So this, the image that we just used, um, I was lucky enough to visit Morocco back in February. Um, and that was the first holiday for many, many years that I took no DSLR with me at all. I did take two, maybe three phones with me. <laughs> I was well covered, um, but uh, no DSLR at all. Did you take a mirrorless camera or just no camera, just phones? No camera, no camera just phones. Oh my gosh, you're very brave. I can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, you know, it's very interesting because um, I could get much more natural photo sorry, much more natural photographs because people weren't aware that I was taking their photograph all the time. So uh, in in the market, uh, you can you can see. Um, and again, I'm I'm not going to profess to be a, a good photographer, so um, my apologies for this. But um, in the market, the the guy here had no idea that I was taking his photograph because I was using a phone. Um, and I'll explain a bit more of that in just a second. And these guys, most definitely not. There was uh, two other people in front of me that had taken these gentlemen's photographs and they'd smiled and made silly faces at them. Um, but they didn't know that I was taking their photograph because what I was doing was, I was using actually a, an Android phone, it was a Sony Z3 for this one, um, and I had it held down by my side and I was using a remote trigger, a blue, Bluetooth trigger. So um, I could point the phone with one hand and trigger it with the other. And, ah. and, uh, and so take very natural natural photographs. Let's take that off because I say I'm not overly chuffed with my photography. You make a very good point. Stealth <laughs> photography or street photography, let's call it, is much easier um, when you're when you're using a phone. And there's yeah, so many other reasons. Creepy. It's not creepy. It's okay. <laughs> but then if you're going to put those up on that on that Photolia instant, you better get the releases from those guys. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And also, um, I knew that they were okay having their photograph taken because two people had before. Um, just an aside for that, um, part of the beliefs uh, of a lot of the older people in Morocco is that uh, you, you shouldn't take their photographs so at all, ever. So uh, I was very careful about whose photograph I was taking. Well, Eric, thank you so much for showing us this. Is there anything else that you uh, meant to show? We're almost out of time. Um, I, I don't know. I've, I've kind of waffled a bit about all kinds of different things. I've got to be excited there. Sorry. Um, no, I think I think I covered everything that I wanted to show. Really, it was it was about getting your photographs from your desktop out to a, a, a much more convenient location, i.e., your iPad or your um, Android device, and then working on them when you felt a bit more comfortable to do so. Excellent. Now, Eric, I know that you're really focusing these days on mobile photography and that you have a new website uh, where you're sharing your expertise in these areas. Yeah. What, what is that website? Okay, so it just so happens that um, I have them up somewhere. Um, oh, would you believe it? No, I haven't. Um, so I've got a couple of, uh, uh, of websites. Obviously, tipsquirrel.com um, is my still my main one. But there is a, another website called Are You Taking the Pics? Now, this is a bit of a play on words. So um, this is all about mobile imaging. Now, I, I understand that this doesn't translate well to, uh, to the States or overseas. This is a play on words here in the UK. If you're um, being a bit rude about somebody or you're, you're taking liberties, we, it would, the, the C in pics would be an S. So uh, are you taking the, yeah. Oh, uh, I see. Oh, so, my. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> so uh, this is, uh, are you taking the pics? As you okay. see, I've, I, I spent a lot, of, a lot of time taking photographs with my, my phone, and I'm experimenting a lot. So I've taken photographs underwater and taken cameras into a studio. So we've used constant lighting to see how they cope um, with all kinds of things. Um, and the latest one I've been using is the G4, which uh, 
is you can go completely manual with so a big transition into phonography there we can, yeah everything is manual setting oh that's terrific are you sponsored by someone to get access to these great phones i i'm not going to say sponsored um but I, i'm supported certainly by a company uh, whose logo is down here so i'll give them a little bit of mention uh, 3.co.uk who are a, a network uh, provider here in the uk and uh, they help me out a great deal with uh, new technology and letting me know when new things are along and letting me borrow them so as I can go out and put them to the test. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I will definitely be visiting areyoutakingthepics.com and I hope everybody else will too. This looks like a really exciting new endeavor for you. And of course, after your very successful tipsquirrel.com um, where you brought us the expertise of so many people who have gone on to become really, really famous um, yeah. with regard to Photoshop. So uh, I'm sure you're going to be doing the same thing with this new with this new Rich Harrington, very proud of this. Very proud of the people that have passed through um, Tip Squirrel and written some amazing stuff. Yeah, I'm very proud of that. But your name is not there, though, John. I think you asked me, but I was too busy doing Linda.com <laughs> stuff. <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that too busy in inverted commas? <laughs> I've been at this a long time before those guys were born. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Well, thank you so much, Eric Reno, for coming and showing us that great workflow. Um, and I want to remind everybody out there that if you're interested in have, in being eligible to, uh, to have a giveaway of the art of iPhone photography, that you should go to the show notes for this episode of The Fix at thisweekinphoto.com slash the fix and upload a photo that you've taken with a mobile device and that you've processed on a mobile device and tell us what app you use to process it, maybe a little bit about your processing. And we would love it for you to get your copy of The Art of iPhone Photography. I only have one of these, so make it a good entry. <laughs> and thank you again, Eric Reno, and thanks everybody for watching. Bye-bye.